What up everyone, it's Blandon here from Elite 4 TV. How would you guys like to analyze your opponent like a pro and exploit their weaknesses? So in this video, I'm gonna show you what I've been working on in the last couple of weeks. Work have been super busy, um, but I have been sort of upping my spreadsheet game and by no means I'm exceptional at spreadsheets but I do enough to get the job done. So, before I start, I just want to shout out to Matt at PV Pokey. He's sort of up, been upgrading his system. It's amazing, like you can now download the battle rating of each of the Pokemon against the meta. So that's actually really, really helpful. So I basically built the spreadsheet around that. And so to give you a scenario, you're facing an opponent with six Pokemon and you want to know which Pokemon are the most useful or it's going to be the most positive against their team. So if you're like me, a part-time hardcore player, uh, besides Tropius beating the water type Pokemon, there is not a lot more that I can remember. So dropping notes down definitely works and I find spreadsheet or notepad takes works for me. So here's a quick way to figure that out. So I'm gonna show you on the screen over here. So using the battle rating, I've built a team builder. So what you can do here is basically choose your Pokemon from 20 of the Tempest meta. And from here, you can have a look at green represents a positive matchup against that Pokemon. Red represents that you're losing to this Pokemon uh, on zero shield, one shield or two shield. So, you know, if we sort of zoom out from this view, what it tells me straight away is I'm going to see where all my holes are, all the red uh, holes in my liner. And do I, I can straight away see if I have any coverage for that Pokemon. So for example, Skarmory is obviously weak against all of the Lantern um, 1 and 2, Golem Alolan. And then I've got Tropius to cover for that. So. The other thing that you can check out straight away on this spreadsheet, and it's quite useful, is this thing over here, where you can see how many losses or wins on certain Pokemon. So over here, you got a Bomber Snow, and I've got 11 losses against this Pokemon, so that's something I need to watch out for. So basically, more than half my team will lose to a Bomber Snow. I'll lose to Water Gun Lapras, that's something I need to watch out for. And Tropius, uh, you know, 10 and also five even matches. So my my team is quite weak to Tropius um, at this moment. And this is not my final six, but you know, this is a quick way to figure it out. So then from there, you can sort of look at a trio. So to give you an example, Zionic, you know, he's been running this lineup, Lantern, Steelix, Tropius, and you can see straight away, this lineup is going to be weak against Oteria, uh, Glalie, surprisingly, and Quacksire, as well as Tropius and Whiskash. So those are some of the Pokemon that would play quite well against Zyomix lineup. And I've been running this lineup as well. It's, it's very solid. I mean, this is only going to serve you as a guide because in a game, What's going to be the biggest difference is your energy gain as well as the way you use your shield and the way you switch as well. That, that will change your game quite dramatically. So this is a guide for you to analyze your opponent really quickly. And so here I am playing against my friend Sun Jin Ho and this is his lineup. He's got Graveler, Tropius, Skarmory, Quagsire, Lantern and Lapras. So I'm plugging it into my spreadsheet right here and straight away I'm able to see my team is going to do quite bad against his Tropius and then also his Lapras as well as his Skarmory. Those three are probably my biggest problem. The way I notice, even though these are all saying seven, I've got a lot of draws with those. So what that basically means, he can trade that Pokemon for one of my teams. So looking at my team against his, this here, I can see that Tropius would perform best against his team, Lantern and Whiskash. And so how am I gonna figure out a team? So when someone looks at your team, you gotta think one step ahead, right? 
if they can see that they can exploit you with Atropius, they're definitely gonna bring Atropius. So you'd better think about the counter for the Atropius. So for just for an example, so straight away we know he's likely gonna play Tropius and he might line this up with something like Skarmory. And because he's playing Skarmory, he might play something like a Lantern instead of Lapras. Because if he play Lapras, he's got two Pokemon that's quite weak to Lantern. So that's my assumption. I'm gonna make an assumption that he's gonna play Lantern, Tropius, and Skarmory. So what am I gonna play? I'm gonna give Zyronix lineup a go, Tropius, Steelix, and Lantern. And show the way you can see I lose quite badly to Tropius, so I really need to do it well where I'm using my Tropius to block his Tropius, and that's my only way of countering it. So I'm going to show you my first match. So we go into my first match and start off with Tropius versus Lantern. So straight away, great matchup for us, and he is forced to swap to his Tropius, and because I've got an energy gain advantage, I'm going to spam Area Ace. He probably thinks I have a Leaf Blade, so he's not going to block. Uh, great, so here I am just going to take this Aerial Ace. That's fine, I'm still having an energy gain here. So what I'm going to do is do another Aerial Ace and then swap out my Tropius because his Aerial Ace is still charging up. So my Steelix is going to take not effective damage from... <laughs> Unfortunately, he played Leaf Blade there. Um, hoping that I'll shield, but I didn't shield, and it does do quite a bit of damage. So I get a crunch off on the lantern he switched, which is a good switch, of course, because he's got water gun. And this is my mistake here. I should have just gone to gain, put more energy on my Steelix first, and then maybe look at using an earthquake on the lantern. But here we go. I, I missed out that crunch because I thought I could get the earthquake off, but that's fine because Tropius is. Uh, locked and loaded and to finish off that lantern and great here because I didn't have too much health on my Tropius so then his Skarmory can't farm energy so which is great he's gonna get a sky attack I'm gonna tank that all good I'm gonna get the first Thunderbolt it's gonna force him to shield a little bit of lag there and I'm gonna tank another sky attack which is fine I'm just going to save my shield for his lantern. So here I'm going to get a second Thunderbolt off. But before I do that, I'm going to charge up a little bit more energy so that when his next Pokemon is switched in, I'm going to be able to do a Thunderbolt. So here I'm going to finish off the Skarmory and I've got a Thunderbolt ready to go. Pretty much one more hit. So I'm going to shield this Leaf Blade and then get my Thunderbolt off to finish off match one. So that is match one. And so now I am thinking about my opponent. Well, what was he worried about there? Well, I am thinking, well, I'm gonna switch my line and I'm gonna play something safe to begin with. And so if we go back to the team builder here, you notice on Lapras, it's all white and a little bit of red, not really dark red. So what this is basically telling us, there's a lot of neutral matchup and it's not performing too badly against his whole team. So we start off with Lapras and we are against Quaxi which is not a bad matchup. I just need to shield those Stone Edges. So here we go. I'm gonna shield the first Stone Edge and then next we have a Surf coming in his face. Well actually two of them. So I'm gonna get two of them in a row. Again so I think what Sun Jung Hong does here is he's going to save up a charge move and switch out his Tropius, which is not a bad move. So I'm getting off my Ice Beam here and he is forced to shield. So what I should have done here is probably switch straight away because he is locked anyway. But with Steelix coming out, I don't think it was the best matchup because Leaf Blade obviously does quite a bit still on the Steelix. So I'm gonna get my Crunch off to try and finish off this Tropius and it gets another Leaf Blade off. Almost took out all my health with just one third health on the Tropius. So it's a really bad matchup for Steelix. I really should have saved him for closing. So 
Skarmory comes out, my Steelix doesn't have much health left and it's not really good. But it was better than putting out the Wish Cash. So I think I should have switched earlier um, there, but that's fine. So here he's going to switch out his Quagsire to get an Earthquake off and I have no shield left. I will need to tank it and I'm going to get a Mud Bomb, finish off the Quagsire. But because his Skarmory is already really lock and loaded, he's going to get the Sky Attack off and to finish me off. So that goes match number two. So thinking back, we go back to our spreadsheet to think. And that time he played Quagsire, he played Skarmory, which is really standard, good coverage for each other. And he also played the Tropius. So because of that, I think I continue with Lapras and I needed to change something up. I don't think Wish Cash was the best choice. So if we go back to our line, uh, I I believe I need to play Skarmory in this situation because Skarmory is actually positive against all his whole lineup and for his Skarmory I am going to bring in my Steelix and, I'm, and this time I'm going to make sure my Steelix gets a matchup against his Skarmory so that's what I'm going to do even though it's slightly at a disadvantage um, because I don't really have a coverage for the Skarmory as you can see here the Steelix is going to cover for the Skarmory so let's see how this match plays out so here Lapras lead and Graveler he plays Graveler instead great this is not a horrible matchup for us I mean he will be forced to shield if he wants to keep his Alolan Graveler out and here I will shield as well because that Rock Blast would finish me off I believe or maybe close to finishing me off and I get off a surf here he is either shielding or losing his graveler so I'm gonna let my Lapras go and here I'm gonna put out my Steelix because Steelix is not gonna take any damage from graveler at all so I'm gonna just do fast move as much as possible charge up a little bit more energy and then here he swaps to Tropius, great stuff because this is exactly what we wanted. We've got the Skarmory ready to go. I'm going to charge up a bit of energy first and switch out the Skarmory to farm away on this Tropius. And this is at a perfect health, you know, this is a perfect health Tropius for farming because we are going to conserve a lot of our health at this HP Tropius and we're going to almost get two Sky Attacks as you can see. And here we go, we're sort of locked in with two sky attacks, we've got the shield advantage. I'm going to spam that flash cannon, whatever comes out. I mean, it's okay, it's Skarmory, but if it was Graveler, I was able to take it down. So here we go, we are going to spam sky attacks. I still have that one shield advantage, and unfortunately I didn't switch fast enough. I was trying to count in my head on how many air slash there was and trying to sort of take the next sky attack on the Steelix but obviously I didn't time it well and I, I was forced to use a shield so I could save it for the next Pokemon. So here Steelix gets another crunch off to finish off the Skarmory. Great, very good tank. Steelix is a big tank and now he will get his Graveler out and we finish it off with an Earthquake. So that's match number three. So Hopefully that gives you a good idea on how you can analyze your opponent. I mean, all of this battle rating, you can go on pvpokey.com. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'm going to be giving this spreadsheet out on the PvP Discord in the link below when I reach 1,000 subscribers. So I really appreciate your guys' support. And if you guys have feedback for me on how I could improve on my videos, on content that you guys might enjoy more, please definitely let me know. and. See you guys next time.